I don't want to just get one license and apply for a different bunch of different ones. I want to go through the process. I want to see what it's like to go through the correct steps. For 20 years, I've been shooting other people having fun. I'm trying to have fun myself. And that's what we're doing right now. We're doing like a little role reversal because Larry's always interviewing other people about their car. Very rarely do you get to kind of explain your build and what you're trying to build your cars for. What's up guys, thank you for watching. Today's episode, we are going to show you Larry Chen's A90 Super Build. You guys have probably seen this car if you watch Formula D. It's usually covered in a bunch of camera gear, suction cups, and a bunch of arms for Larry to be able to capture those amazing footage of all the Formula D guys. So one issue he brought up with us uh, after we installed this cage and did his cooling was that he doesn't have enough power to keep up with all these, you know, drift cars that are over a thousand horsepower. So even though they're going sideways, he still needs more power to keep up with them. Pretty amazing to hear, you know, that they're drifting with that much speed. So we've got a bunch of stuff going on to the car to help make up that power difference. We are gonna keep the stock turbo, but we're going with a full E50 setup, a uh, new tune, downpipe, and the CSF fillet man aluminum intake manifold. All right, so the first thing James is tackling right now is obviously the uh, CSF intake manifold, but the biggest key to doing a stock turbo setup with E is going to be the low pressure fuel pump. We found out on our Supra, the most reliable and the most consistent fuel pump setup for the in-tank low pressure is the PFS upgraded stage three fuel pump. And you know, they all provide enough volume, but that pump literally does not have any fuel starvation issues. So we're able to go down to one flashing bar of uh, fuel when we're out on track. Before we couldn't even get down past, you know, two thirds of a tank, but that PFS pump does a great job at, you know, providing enough fuel to the engine. So once we get this manifold in, we're gonna route the other stuff, all the lines and everything, and then we're gonna start tackling all the other bolt-ons and then mainly the fuel pump. Alright guys, so we finally finished up Larry's car. He's here to pick it up. Your event is tomorrow, right? Yeah. For whatever reason, Formula Drift lets me use my personal A90 Toyota Supra as a camera chase car. And I did it for the first time last year. Yeah. Did not have enough power. <laughs> it was embarrassing. I mean, it was getting to the point where the guys would look over at me and then, for example, like Chelsea Denofa, 1200 horsepower yeah. Mustang with nitrous. He looks over and he's like, just go, bro. Just go. <laughs> just go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he'll catch up. And I mean, it, it was cool, but it was scary because I was driving 10 tenths. Yeah. And I can't be doing that. Like, it's just, yeah. there, there needs to be a margin of error. 
and I did have a chance to drive Toyota Production Engineering's Time Attack car that had 650 horsepower, and I was like, this is it. This is the amount of power and then some that I need to keep up with these drift cars that have 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 horsepower. So that's why I hit up the guys at Studio SR. You guys did a number to this thing, which uh, I think this is a good start. Um, of course, we're gonna develop this more. It's never gonna be like your Pike Speed car, but um, <laughs> it's something that is usable for media because this is my tool. This is what I use to take the pictures and video. The build's like, what, you started two years ago? Yeah, so this was a pretty early Supra. It was a 2020, you know, during the shutdown, I used it for many different road trips. I fell in love with the platform, but um, I never really wanted to dig into it as a track car. Part of it is because it scared me, it's so fast. Yeah. But over this time period, I feel like I've developed as a driver to be able to handle more power. And that's why it was time for me to, you know, hit up a bunch of our friends, a bunch of partners like CSF, Sparco, Eventury. You know, so many people came together to help us with this build. Yeah, and what I think is really cool is this car was basically just a stock car with a stage one tune on it when you first started out. And then you got the GR86, you started tracking that a lot. And then just what, a week ago, you got your NASA racing license. Yeah, so. so congrats on that, by the way. Got my NASA wheel to wheel racing license and then in two weeks I'm getting my SCCA license which I'm really excited about I yeah. it's one of those things where it's a rite of passage and I also want to do it legitimately yeah and I I don't want to just get one license and apply for a different bunch of different ones mm -hmm. I want to go through the process I want to see what it's like to go through the correct steps yeah because I want to just develop as a driver you know this is so much fun for me I've been shooting these <laughs> nerds for my entire life for 20 years I've been shooting other people having fun I'm trying to have fun myself and that's what we're doing right now we're doing like a little role reversal because Larry's always interviewing other people about their car very rarely do you get to kind of explain your build and what you're trying to build your cars for so I love that you're getting into driving. You saw our carts that we just got into. So hopefully we can start doing that soon. But I think this power level is gonna be perfect for what you're trying to do right now. Yeah, because what I had before was probably about 420, 425 horsepower to the wheels, mm -hmm. which was just enough. Yeah. Uh, because of course they're spinning uh -huh. and their tire speed could be 100, 120 mile an hour. Yeah. But they're only still going about 65, 80 mile an hour, especially on the streets of Long Beach. Yeah. Right? The track itself is very, very unforgiving. It's a street course and it's on asphalt. Is it bumpy? It's okay. It's pretty smooth because okay. they repaved it about 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Um, before that, it was very bumpy. I see. Yeah. So what's crazy though, is they lay down so much rubber that there is quite a bit of traction. I am still on the edge of traction, which is something that we'll probably update pretty soon uh, with APR bits. So like I'll, I'll probably get an APR front splitter and an APR wing yeah. just to get a little more downforce. Yeah. But as of right now, you know, 295 squared setup, AO52 Advan, Yokohama tires. Um, I have rotiform wheels, um, KW suspension, iBox sway bars. Now we have the Sparco seats, so I won't be rolling around as much. Like the stock seats, as you know, are yeah. tough to drive in. Because oh, yeah. it's like this. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you get tired when you're driving like that. Exactly. You're sliding around, holding yourself into position. So I think the seats alone are gonna make a huge difference for you because you're gonna be turning. I've always wanted to know how much weight do you think, if you guys don't know, by the way, Go look up Larry's IG. You'll see this car with all the cameras, all the camera gear on it, the suction cups. Like how much does that all weigh? It, it, it's not too bad. Um, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably 30 pounds maybe. Oh, okay. It's not too yeah. bad, but of course it's not in an ideal location. It's on the yeah. nose. And depending on how we configure it, it's yeah. either lighter or heavier. What we've done, you know, it, it just last year at Long Beach was a lower mount. Mm -hmm. So that is about the 30 pound weight. I see. When we do a higher mount where it almost looks like the Eiffel Tower scaffolding, yeah. then it gets to maybe 50 pounds or so. Okay. Then I can kind of feel it on the nose. The thing that is most important to me is feeling what the car is doing. And I think the Sparco, the all carbon seats that we have in here are yeah. really gonna help with For that. Sure. 
and because um, with the stock seats, like I said, I was just rolling around all over the place. Yeah. This sounds so good though. We just started it for the first time. We hit up our friends from Evolution Raceworks. They have a downpipe for this. And because this is gonna be off-road and track only, it was appropriate for us to go with that downpipe. And uh, in order to make the most amount of power from the stock turbo, what else did we do? We did that. We did you, a, you guys did a fuel pickup. We did the performance uh, fueling solutions, low pressure fuel pump which we found because you're going to be sloshing around everywhere especially trying to get all the correct angles and stuff with the videos that is the one of the few pumps that doesn't fuel starve yeah that's going to help a lot and then you know we've got the eventuri intake that should sound pretty amazing and it looks amazing um, and then now with this extra added boost level that we're at, the cooling from the CSF manifold. Yeah, this is kind of like the highlight of the build now. Yeah. This is so much more efficient than stock. Yeah. And um, because we're putting so much more boost through it, it's gonna create a lot more heat. Correct. To be able to lower in air intake temperatures, this thing's gonna probably help a lot. Huh? Yeah. And then also too, guys, I had to stop Larry from going full big turbo real quick, just like straight from stage one to like stage 4.5 or whatever you want to call it. But the good thing about the CSF manifold is that it, it's going to be cooling it for whatever stage you're at, but it's also already pre set up for the port injection. So right now, even though we don't have port injection in it, it's all ready to go. All we have to do is buy the injectors, get the controller and uh, throw it on there and then flash a new tune in it. But like you said, before we get the APR stuff on here, I think this is the perfect power level, headache free, uh, super reliable. And then you won't be having to overdrive the car without any arrow. Yeah, yeah, I'm really yeah. excited about that. This car as a modern sports car, I feel like is so good. Yeah. The fact that they're still selling this in, and you can get it in manual or automatic. I'm assuming that you are seeing a lot more of these come through the doors here at Studio RSR, huh? For sure, for sure. And it's, it's great to see people who are all the way through their build, you know, they've got all the stuff that you've got and more, and then we've still got people who just got their car, so. That's the thing is, for a while, it was kind of like the unloved chassis. Everybody was like, eh. But it's because they haven't had a chance to drive it yet. Yeah. And also people like yourself haven't had a chance to get to it and tune it. What's, what's happening now is we've made it our own and we've made it something that's way greater than stock. I mean, this is not nothing close to the stock vehicle at all. Yeah. There's just so much that has gone into the development of just these few parts yeah. that change this car completely. Yeah, and all these parts took like eight, nine months to develop, test, and then we took it out on track to test it, to go back and make changes, so. But yeah, everything is uh, ready to go. So you've got the streets of Long Beach tomorrow. <sighs> You're used to those walls though. Oh so. <laughs> my God, I'm gonna be. All right, I just gotta get the nerves out. I gotta get a couple runs in. Um, I'll get a couple nice clips and then I'm gonna run doors with these guys. Like, That's so it, cool. it is honestly such an honor. And on, I, I feel like I practice my entire driving life to get to this point. Mm -hmm to have this responsibility yeah. and to utilize it. Yeah, and it's so cool because without you, we wouldn't get those angles and those perspectives of like, you know, all, all we're seeing is stuff from like the stands or if you go and watch in person, but seeing your videos and stuff makes you feel like you're right there in the car next to them. And the thing is, I tell these guys, don't hold back. Don't, don't even think about the fact that I'm behind you. Yeah. You know, you go at your speed because the point is that I can film at your speed. Mm -hmm. It's not like a huge um, Porsche Cayenne or BMW X5M with a huge arm on it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll get great footage, but you can't go at their speed. Yeah. You know, we're entering, I don't even know how fast, um, into uh, turn 19 and 11. That's the, the three corners that we run at FD Long Beach. But going down that shoot, going down that straight, it's like, oh my God, walls surrounding <laughs> us. Apart, you know, apartment You've buildings, got small trees. trees. You're like, oh, I yeah. think the walls over it's, there. It's, it is <laughs> something else, and I, yeah. I really, I mean, these guys make so much smoke because they only get two laps out of one set of tires. Crazy. So, especially when they're transitioning, mm -hmm. I have to punch through that smoke and just hope yeah. that they're on the other side of that. So I've been doing it long enough where what I do, the secret is that I kind of look at the edges of the track mm -hmm. 
to make sure I'm still on point. And give you some point of reference where yeah, you're at. Yeah, exactly. I've exactly. always wondered, I'm like, dude, how are you seeing anything? Because you're behind them. <laughs> the best is when, when the uh, my, my passenger, who is usually triggering the camera, because uh -huh. I, can't, I can't do so many things. I'm just focusing on driving. Yeah, yeah. I can't fire off the still camera, because we have two cameras. We have one uh -huh. for video, that's shooting um, either slow-mo or normal speed video, and then we have one that's shooting stills. Yeah. Uh, I can't even think about taking a break or having some mental capacity to think, oh, this is a good picture. Let me take <laughs> so I usually have somebody riding with me just thinking, okay, now he's in the pocket. Yeah. Now I'm gonna fire the camera. That's awesome. Um, so I have somebody helping me in that regard. But the funny thing is usually that passenger is like looking and it's like complete whiteout conditions. And they're like, as soon as you, you know. see a glimmer of a car, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Fire, fire, Where, fire. where's the car? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So really, really excited about this. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Love working with the Studio RSR guys. Being able to capture your Pikes Peak effort and of course uh, being able to work with you guys on SEMA builds for Toyota. Dude, it's, I'm just it's, so it's glad. It's a dream. It really is a dream. <laughs> um, what were you got, glad about? Oh, I'm just so glad seeing you actually like progressing your driving, you know? It's yeah. what we love to do, yeah. right? Heck, and now and you actually get to have a turn. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and then of course, these guys built my full cage for my 350Z drift car. Up until this point, I was pretty reserved with my driving mm -hmm. with the 350Z because of the fact that it didn't have a cage. Yeah. And I've seen time and time again, you know, people crash their cars, roll their cars, or get in incidents where the cage would have really helped. Yeah. You know, it, it, safety is always number one, safety is first. So the fact that these guys built these cages and roll bars in Southern California, in house, and you can get custom uh, colors, you can yeah. get custom options depending on what you want for your application. It's incredible. The fact that manufacturing still happens in Southern California, so cool. <laughs> um, but uh, the point is safety first. And also on top of that, when I was driving the 350Z after the full cage, it felt a lot stiffer, felt yeah. a lot easier to drift, but I just more felt confident behind the wheel. Yeah. So I was able to do the water tower section on um, or Steve Mile. Yeah. I, I felt comfortable, you know, because that's where people flip. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it in and I'm just going to feel it out. And then as I drove more and more with the cage, I felt comfortable to go in full angle and yeah. just. Dude, you were dancing with oh, the car. So good. I was so, it, it, I was so impressed. I've you never were just done like that. letting the wheel spin, just chilling. Never, ha <laughs> never have I ever felt that comfortable in a drift car <laughs> because of the safety aspect of it. Cool. You know, because. Yeah. You just, you just never know. It's a mental thing. For you know? sure. Yeah. And yeah. then once you're caged in, I'm, I'm practicing tandem. Mm -hmm. um, I'm letting people follow me too. Yeah. So I had a couple Formula Drift drivers, including Connor Shanahan, um, uh, Odie, Bakchis, yeah. uh, Rome, Chef Frontier, th those guys, maybe it wasn't the best idea for them to follow me, <laughs> but, but um, I, I allowed it to happen because yeah. I need that pressure. For sure. You know, so it, sure. it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun and I'm so glad to be able to work with you guys in this capacity. Because honestly, I'm very honest and I've said this since I started working with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm a photographer, I take pictures. You know, yeah. I don't know how to work on these cars and you guys do. So that's the point yeah. of us partnering together. For sure. Well, we love how modest you are, but you're a great driver. <laughs> Thanks. So if you guys want to check it out, follow his IG. If you don't already, he's going to be at Long Beach this weekend. The car will be at... It'll be at the Toyota booth on display. So if you guys are at Formula Drift Long Beach, yeah. um, you'll be able to see it there. So For sure. And then we'll be at that. Grid Life running together. Y yes. 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 So. Grid Life, Big Willow. Can't wait. Cool. Thanks awesome. again, dude. Yeah. See you guys.